Hello guys, this is Navin Reddy. So today we'll talk about palindrome number. Now if we talk about any programming language, let it be C, C++ or Java or ASP, we have to deal with number of examples, right? To understand how programming works, you need to go for some examples. So normally we start with E1 odd, then we go for factorial, then we can come across something called as palindrome. Now see, to understand what is palindrome, we have to understand how it works. See the basic problem is not to not to code. The problem is what the exact logic to solve that particular problem. And the problem is you have to find a palindrome number. So let it be, let's suppose you are, you are given a number. So 1, 2, 3. You have to check the given number is a palindrome or not. Right? Then we have a concept of Armstrong also. So today we will deal about a palindrome. Now let's suppose uh, you have a number 1, 2, 3. So palindrome simply means you have to reverse this number. So once you get the reverse number, it will be two, uh, 3 to 1. You have to check both this number are same or not. So 1, 2, 3 should be equal to 3, 2, 1. Right? Now, are the same? No. So we can say they are not palindrome. If you have a number called as 1, 2, 1, and we say if you, if you get a reverse of 1 to 1, you will get again 1 to 1. So that means this is a palindrome number because our input and outputs are same. So palindrome. Input is different, output is different, not a palindrome. right? So first step we have to go for is reverse. So first you have to reverse a number. So let's go for the logic of reverse. Now to understand how reverse works, think in this way. Let's suppose you have a number again 1, 2, 3. Okay, now once you get this number 1, 2, 3, excuse me, I think we have some word problem. So we have a number 1, 2, 3. Now it's working. Now, if we talk about this number 1, 2, 3, you have to break down these numbers. So first, you have to isolate 3 so that you will get 3. So once you get 3, then you have to increase the status like let's suppose if you have a number 3 so it will be a unique place so you have to isolate 2 and bring it here so this 3 should become 30 so you have to multiply this number by 10 so that you can append it with 2 right so once you let once you isolate 1 it will come here then you have to multiply this number by 10 so that from 32 it becomes 320 so now you will get 321 Right? This is how you have to reverse a number. Okay, So if you go with syntactical way, now let's go for this. So syntactical way, first you require some variables. So let's suppose your variables is int i, oh, no i, we are fed up with i. Let's suppose n, uh, the number will be 1, 2, 3. Then we require a number called as, a uh, variable called as r and s. So initially S will be 0. Now this R we are using for remainders. Because to isolate a number, we have to find the remainder. Then we have to break down the number. So remainder. So once you get the actual reverse, reverse will be stored in this S. So to do this, we have to apply some steps. So R equal to, it will be N mod 10. Now N mod 10 will give you a remainder. So n is 1 to 3 so if you apply mod 10 you will get 3 so here you will get 3 then you have to actually break down the number so from 1 to 3 you have to make it 1 2 because already we got 3 so n equal to n divided by 10 now you will get here n equal to 12 right so once you get this 3 you have to increase the status of 3 and that's why you have to multiply this number by 10 and plus r. Initially your s is 0. So 0 into 10 will be 0 plus r which is 3. Okay. Now you have to do this thing repeatedly for 2 for 1. And that's why we require a while loop. Then question arises: till what time? You have to break down this number. You have to repeat this loop till your n is greater than 0. So once your n becomes 0, you have to stop this process, right? Because once you get n is 0, you are already get, getting the reverse number. 
right? So this is how it works. Now, if you want to check, let's let's go for the uh, actual process. Let's debug this. So your n is one, two, three, and it is greater than zero. Yes. Now n mod ten will give you three. So yes, it's your three. Now let's suppose we have variables n, r, and s. Initially, your n is one, two, three. R n which is 1 2 3 mod 10 you will get r as 3 right now n equal to n mod 10 it means your n is 1 2 3 you have to break down your n right so your 3 will be removed you will get only 1 2 okay because uh, if you talk about uh, n it's an int value so int value only go for the actual question part okay then after that you have to go for s equal to s into 10. Now s is 0 by default. So 0 into 10 will be 0 plus r. r is your 3 so s becomes 3. Okay. Again the loop will go on and your n is 1 2. One, 12 is greater than 0. Yes. r equal to it's n. n is 12. 12 mod 10. r will be 2. Right. Then n equal to n mod 10, n is 12, 12 mod 10, 12 divided by 10, you will get 1. Your s is initially 3, so 3, 10, 3 into 10 is 30. 30 plus r, r is your 2, so you will get 3, 2. Okay, so between our sections. Then, again the loop will run because n is 1, so 1 is greater than 0, yes. r, r equal to n mod 10, you will get r as 1, right. Then n equal to n divided by 10, n is initially 1, you will get now 0. And once you get here, so s, s is 32, 32 into 10, it's 320. 320 plus r, which is 1, so we will get 321. So now we have s, which is 321. Again, if you go for the loop, n is 0, 0 is greater than 0, no, and the loop will get out. So if you say loop is out, it means you get a reverse number, which is s. Your initial number was n, but now n is 0. To compare, see, we, we got the reverse number, right? Now we have to compare what was the input and what is the output. So for uh, for the actual go for palindrome, we have to use one more variable called as t, where t is equal to n, right? Because n is already 0 here. So, so once you uh, complete the loop, n will be 0. We don't want uh, n will be 0. We want uh, initial value. So it will be stored in t. So now we can say here, if your t is equal to equal to s okay so if your t is equal to equal to s it means your number is palindrome because your input and output is same so we have to go for sop again sop is system dot out dot println language changes statement changes everything is same in c you write printf in c out uh, in a c plus plus you write c out in java you have to go for system dot out dot println and in brackets, you have to say it's palindrome, right? Or otherwise, if you say else part, else you have to say SOP, not a palindrome, okay? So either it can be a palindrome or not a palindrome. So if your input and outputs are same, palindrome. If your input is different from output, not a palindrome. You have to reverse a number. First step, you have to reverse a number. To reverse a number, we have this logic. So if you if you're finding a number reverse, so you can apply this logic. But if you have to go for palindrome, first you have to reverse, then you have to check your initial point and the ending part, which is your S. If they are same, palindrome. If you are different, not a palindrome. Now if you can check for any number, let it be one to one. So if you go for one to one initially, now this whole thing changes. Ultimately, the reverse number you will get is one to one. If your input is one to one, your output will be one to one because if you go for all this processing. 1 to 1 is equal to 1 to 1, yes, we get a palindrome. For 1 to 3, not a palindrome. For 1 to 1, palindrome. So it means 1 to 1 is a palindrome. 1 to 3 is not a palindrome, right? Simple, right? Again, if you want the actual code, find below in description area, you will find the actual link for the code. And for further videos, please subscribe. Thank you so much.